Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia News Time and have a top stories. We are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 2nd of July. Flood situation worsens in India as a Sam Red Alert issue. Former Pakistan PM Imran Khan arbitrarily detained, says UN Working Group. And Nepal PM there has to see confidence both after UML and Congress for the land. And now for all the details, the flood hit Indian state of Assam is on high alert as a basis for more in the country. The northeastern state has been inundated by flood waters for several days killing at least 34 people and affecting more than 600,000 people. In the countryside, agricultural fields and houses were submerged in flood waters. The water level in the Brahmaputra River, which flows through the region, has been higher than usual, leading to flooding in many parts of Assam. More than half a million people across 19 districts have been affected, a report from Assam State Disaster Management Authority said. तो पानी से बहुत आदमी लोग को मुश्किल होता है बहुत आदमी का घर पानी के अंदर गया अभी तो क्या करेगा अभी बहुत मुश्किल है The Indian Air Force rescued 13 fishermen marooned on a small island in the middle of the Brahmaputra north of Dibrugarh in Assam officials said on Tuesday पानी होइसे हमार धान असिल सावल असिल सब पानी तलत गोर पाच जन परियाल एते जने तने खाली ऊपर ते इखनी तही बोहिसर and UN Human Rights Working Group said in an opinion issued on Monday that Pakistan's former Prime Minister Imran Khan's detention is arbitrary and in violation of international law. The group on arbitrary detention said that the appropriate remedy would be to release Khan immediately and accord him an enforceable right to compensation and other reparations in accordance with international law. The UN Working Group said Khan's legal woes were part of a much larger campaign of repression against him and his PTI party. It said that in the lead up to the 2024 elections, members of Khan's party were arrested and tortured and their rallies were disrupted. Pakistan's election commission denies that the elections were rigged. Khan has been in jail since last August and is fighting dozens of other cases which are continuing. Khan and his party say that he was ousted in 2022 after falling out with Pakistan's powerful military. He alleged the US and Pakistani military played a role in his ouster through a parliamentary vote. Both denied the accusations. Moving on, MQM founder leader Altaf Hussain has called out Pakistan army for interference in the country's political and economic affairs. He said the restart of so-called anti-terror operations is going to make Pakistan more unstable. A report. Mutahida Qaumi Movement founder Altaf Hussain has said that his party opposes the military's interference in Pakistan's political, economic and administrative matters and wants to see their involvement in the country's defence only. During an event in London on Monday, Hussain said that the people of Pakistan cannot get real freedom until they get freedom from the slavery of the corrupt army generals and feudal lords who are British and American agents and have been dividing the people into ethnic entities. He also expressed his opposition to Pakistan government's move to start so-called anti-terror operations that he said would make Pakistan more unstable. System ka mukhalif tha, who corrupt, feudal, medieval, corrupt, feudal system and the interference of army, ISI, in the political or government affairs, directly or indirectly. I want to eliminate the हम सब को लड़ाया है इन फौज के अमेरिकी बर्तानवी एजेंट जर्नलों ने 
خدا کے لیے ان کی سازش کو سمجھیے Altaf Hussein who lives in exile in London has been a vocal critic of Pakistan's military and its rights violations. He said just like jailed former PM Imran Khan, he was also falsely implicated in cases and is called a traitor for exposing the army. UN Political Affairs Chief Rosemary Di Carlo on Monday said that the United Nations led meeting with Afghanistan's Taliban in Qatar does not mean a recognition of their government. The Doha meeting which concluded on Monday was the third such meeting in the Gulf nation and was attended by the Taliban for the first time which has not been internationally recognized since seizing power in 2021. Di Carlo said it is the decision of member states on whether to recognize a government or not. Uh, recognition is for member states. It is not for the United Nations. Uh, we are an international organization. We have 193 members, but it is their decision on whether they recognize a government or not, not ours. Well, what we are doing is facilitating Uh, the interest of uh, quite a number of countries in the international community who feel that engagement with Afghanistan, principled engagement, um, will be to the benefit of the Afghan people, its neighbors, and the international community. Rights groups criticize the UN for not having Afghan women at the table with the Taliban in Doha. UN officials to ensure the Taliban did not skip the meeting as they did in February decided on not to bring women activists to the official event. The Taliban say they respect rights in line with their interpretation of Islamic law. Running through all the discussions was the deep international concern from special envoys and for me about the ongoing and serious restrictions on women and girls. Afghanistan cannot return to the international fold or fully develop economically and socially if it is deprived of the contributions and potential of half its population. We also discuss the need for more inclusive governance and respect for the rights of minorities. Moving on, Sri Lanka will save 5 billion dollars in interest owed to bilateral creditors as part of its debt restructuring process. President Ranil Vikrame Singh has said on Tuesday adding that the funds will be used to boost dollar reserves and restore growth. The cash trapped island nation inked deals with China and other creditor nations to restructure about 10 billion dollars in bilateral debt last week following 15 months of negotiations. Vikrame Singh has said Sri Lanka gains multiple benefits from this agreement. The repayment period has been extended by 8 years to 2043 and interest rates have been adjusted to 2.1% or less. Sri Lanka's total external debt is 37 billion dollars. Talks with bondholders to restructure 12.5 billion dollar worth of debt is progressing well and a conclusion is expected soon, the president said, kicking off a two-day debate on the restructuring process in the parliament. And Nepal's Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dehel has decided to face the vote of confidence and not to resign immediately. Secretary of his CPNMI Centre Devendra Podil has confirmed. This comes after Nepali Congress and CPNUML struck a midnight deal to form a new alliance. As per the agreement, UML Chairman KP Sharma Oli will lead the new government expected to be formed soon for one and a half years and then will hand over to Congress President Sher Bahadur Doeba for the remaining term until the next election. Dehel, who came to power right after 2022 general election, has faced vote of confidence for record four times. Nepal has had 11 governments since it abolished its 239-year-old monarchy in 2008, which has failed to bring political stability and has been largely credited for a struggling economy and corruption. Meanwhile, a Nepali court on Monday sentenced Ram Bahadur Bomjon, whom thousands believed was a reincarnation of Buddha, to 10 years in jail for child sexual abuse. The judge also ordered him to pay $3,750 in compensation to the victim. His lawyer said he would appeal in a higher court. 
Bom John was arrested at a house on the outskirts of Kathmandu in January. As a teenager, Ram Bahadur Bom John had drawn international attention when in 2005, tens of thousands of people turned up to see the Buddha boy sitting cross-legged under a tree in a dense forest for nearly 10 months. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.